Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Evan Morikawa. Uh, tonight, I'll uh, be talking a little, actually a little bit more about this, about building declarative functional reactive programming, or how I learned to be a plumber, and a little bit about building a mail client. Uh, so this talk actually has two major goals. The first one is to demystify and hopefully give you an, an intuition as to what all those words mean. Uh, the other one is to show you a little bit why we use that pattern and sort of what it uh, benefits for you. So first of all, I work as an engineer at Nihilus uh, building this. It is, we call it M1. It is an email client written entirely in JavaScript, uh, but it runs on the desktop on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and is designed to be extensible from the ground up uh, all through uh, modern web technology. Uh, it's also fully open source, so a lot of the design patterns I'm going to talk about tonight, you actually can find online as well. Uh, so, but to get us started, this talk is actually mostly about pipes, uh, and how you actually can do some fairly complex things with uh, that abstraction. Uh, but before we get there, let me take a step back and first talk about something hopefully we're a little bit familiar with, and that's events. Uh, so first of all, I want you to imagine an event, like a click event or something like that. <coughs> Uh, as if it was like a bell, like one of those like call bells for uh, in those old houses. Uh, when you get an event, the first thing you have to do normally is you have some callback bound to it, and that callback might have another callback which has another callback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we've probably seen this pattern before, uh, and as a result, we have the concept of promises to help us chain these together. So now at least. With this callback, we have a series of things we want to do in series. Uh, but at the end of the day, we still have this fundamental programming model where we have an event, and then we listen to the actions of those events. Um, and as the number of events grows, this becomes increasingly complicated. Uh, you'll really shoot yourself in the foot if these callbacks have side effects, and they start mutating state from underneath you, and then the rest of the pipeline down the road gets a little bit hairy. Uh, so instead of thinking about these like dinging events and processing them, I want to think about sort of this concept of these pipelines. Uh, this will sort of represent, at least for now, a very abstract function. Uh, and at the end of the day, functions have an input. They do something, they have an output. right? Uh, and you can compose these functions together to do other things. This is a very basic uh, concept, but at the end of the day is at the essence of what being functional means. It's important to note that these pipes don't leak. There are no side effects to them. They have a strict contract that what goes in uh, and what comes out are the same every time, regardless of how you use them. Uh, this is an important uh, concept because then you can take them, you can chain them together and wire up an application with a series of inputs and outputs. I can say that I want to connect these pieces to these pieces and declare in a very declarative way how everything is connected to each other instead of coding exactly the process with which all the data changes. Uh, declarative programming is actually something you're very familiar with because it comes in a lot of different forms, including uh, Excel. In a way, Excel is a it is one of the declarative ways to express that that cell is the function of these other cells. And as you change the data around, that updates. Here, you're not programming loop through these cells. You're just saying that I want this to be the result of another. You're sort of wiring a system together. Uh, this basic concept can be as arbitrarily complex as you like and has a lot of applications beyond programming. In fact, I would argue it's more natural to think about it in a non-programming context, uh, in actually a literal plumbing aerospace engineering one, uh, but also in like a signal processing world. Right Here's some MATLAB simulating signal processing thing, but at the end of the day, we've got these function blocks. Uh, they do one basic thing. They're functional. They don't have side effects. You wire them together, push some signal through, and get some output. If you've ever had a signals processing class or something like that, this should be like an intuitive way to think about it. Uh, I would actually even argue that a, a circuit is effectively that, right? We've wired together these components that behave in very predictable functional ways uh, to make these very complex systems. But in the circuits world, this is the natural way to think about it. You think about things as these like wirings of these individual functions together. 
Uh, and, and I guess I argue that that's something that's extremely useful to think about in a programming context as well, especially when you're building these large complex apps. Uh, but last year, this is not a circuits class. This is about, um, this is about Manhattan script. This is Manhattan JS and JavaScript. Manhattan that should be a type. Um, but uh, so this is a concept. Those, those buzzwords you saw before is gaining a lot of traction in the JavaScript world. And uh, you probably, you may have heard of this framework called Redux. It's very commonly associated with React. React, um, but it very much takes these concepts to heart as well. And to sort of bring it back to piping analogies, right? Uh, at the end of the day, Re Redux, you get a state and an action, uh, and you shove it through this set of functions, which they call a reducer. A reducer because it's reducing a state and action into one new state. Um, this pipe doesn't leak. It is entirely functional in nature, and it is designed to structure apps in a way that are robust to these types of changes. To give you another example, uh, Elm is another programming language uh, developed by a guy named Evan Shapleki, who uh, enforced these concepts in the very core of the language. Like This is actually how you have to, to code it. This is particularly nice because it actually also compiles into JavaScript uh, and HTML and CSS, and actually is a strong inspiration for Dan Abramoff in the creation of uh, Redux, but it also has the at a very high level the same fundamental concept. They just call them uh, the Elm documentation calls them some models. You push it through this update function, and you get out some new model that you can use to pass and render into a view as well. Uh, and finally, there's another uh, framework that actually we use called ReactiveX, which is a Microsoft project. Uh, once again, same basic concept. You take some asynchronous data stream. They call them observers. You process it. And you get some output that you can subscribe to. Uh, the cool thing about this is they, they have this idea that that data on the top is probably something that's constantly changing. It's an, it's an asynchronous event stream. It's some stream of tweets. It's a bunch of events. It's a bunch of new emails coming in. Uh, and as a result, they really emphasize this reactive concept, which kind of comes largely for free with this type of model in that all the data you have on the top, like as soon as it updates, it just sort of gets flushed through your pipeline, and it immediately reacts to everything that's happening sort of all the pieces that we have together to sort of help us construct these new type of applications. So to specifically show you a little bit about what uh, the way we use it, uh, this is uh, N1 here. It is a email client that is working and acts as if it was a native desktop app. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is actually all built in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Uh, everything here is rendered by React and running JavaScript. <laughs> And you can build and extend it as if it was a JavaScript app. Uh, backing the whole thing, though, is a local large SQLite database. Uh, email has a huge amount of data to it. We cache locally pretty much all of your threads, hundreds of thousands of threads and gigabytes of data. And furthermore, to make things more complicated, the whole point of this is to be extensible, is to allow other people to put plugins on top of this, which means that there might be all of these third-party packages also updating the data. So we have a large amount of data that is updating very frequently. And as a result, we want a data model that really helps us keep that in check. And so somewhere way down the line, we don't have some runtime error because we got the state and view out of sync. Uh, so as a result, we, as the way we do this to keep this uh, thread list in sync and scrolling along well is we combine that with, the, um, with this Rx library that I mentioned earlier. So like I said, we have this database, and you can imagine querying a database as it would uh, any other database, except instead of running this query once, what we can do is we create this, uh, this event emitter. It is now the top of the funnel of this pipeline. And we can process that data as we need uh, along the way down. And at the bottom of the pipeline, we have this method that just sort of triggers every time any data changes. The nice thing about this pattern is that anytime anything in the system changes the database, this pipeline gets rerun and we get the newest fresh data, which is sort of declaratively hooked up to the views, which makes it extremely robust to changes uh, when you have a lot of data changing very quickly from all these different sources. And to finally put it back in this like funnel concept again, basically we have this database at the top. We can query data as we need it and slice and sort and filter and map it. And at the end, we have this easy, nice, robust data source that sort of maps straight back to our views again. 
Um, so at the end of the day, thinking declaratively like this is something that can help turn coding and actually what I would call a, a plumbing problem. At this point, you're now focused on just wiring things up correctly so they so you get your data going to where it needs to be it needs to be accessed instead of worrying about what the state is at, at, at all times uh, and getting all the runtime bugs as a result. Thinking functionally is about keeping these unwanted side effects. It's about, it's about keeping these pipes from leaking. It's about keeping um, the inputs and outputs consistent, which really helps build systems like this. Finally, thinking reactively is something that forces you to build for constantly changing data. I mean, sometimes, yes, there are many apps where you only have a couple actions, but any app that's listening to any other type of data source, be it a socket or a changing database, it's really helpful to think about your whole system in terms of these constantly updating pipelines. Uh, so if anything, just sort of think about this in terms of, instead of these event-driven data flows, these pipeline-driven data flows. Uh, and it's certainly something that's helped us keep this app growing as we've been uh, expanding N1. Thank you very much.